Oh, um, uh, the force of gravity equals the universal constant g times m1 m2 over r squared, where r is the distance between masses That's of m1 correct. and m2. So, sometimes you need this law if you look at, for instance, what is happening between planets. Or, just if you want to know what is happening between a, a satellite on the Earth, because the distance uh, matters between the satellite on the Earth. So, you have uh, the law of uh, gravitation. And basically, if you take two masses, uh, M1 and M2, it's like a Coulomb slot except it's between masses. So there is a force acting on one by two. And of course, there is an equal in magnitude on the opposite interaction force acting on two by one. That's the third law. And in magnitude, these forces are equal to so the magnitude of F12, it's equal to the magnitude of F21, and it's equal to, as you said, uh, Josh, so big G, the constant of uh, gravitation, M1, M2, divided by R squared, where R is the distance between the masses. So, G is equal to 6.67, 10 to the minus 11, on it is by units. From there, of course, you get that uh, the weight of an object at the surface of the Earth is equal to m times g. Because you take uh, the Earth, and so you have an object here. <coughs> so you have the mass m, and here the mass of the Earth is big m. Then uh, there is a force acting on small m by big m. We call that force the weight. And the weight, according to this, is equal to g, small m, big m, divided by r squared. But m is so close to the surface of the Earth that r squared is going to be the radius of the Earth. So we can just say this is mg by saying that all of that is a constant equal to g. So you have the weight uh, that is uh, given by this formula. Okay, so these are the laws of Newton. And uh, they work pretty good at our scale and when the speed is not too high. So now we can uh, try to put them to good use. That is, as I was telling you at the beginning, we're going to use f equal ma in rectangular coordinates. And then we're going to look at another coordinate system, curvy linear, and so on. So let's turn to uh, chapter 13. So let's start by number two. And since we are in uh, engineering, sometimes you're going to see uh, engineering units, uh, well, Anglo Saxon units, I should say. Um, so you know SI units like kilogram and so on? Let me write this uh, here. So. So for my 
mass in SI units, of course, uh, the usual units uh, are the kilogram. And for the force, it is the newton. What is it for the force in uh, Anglo-Saxon units? That's a pound, yes. So the symbol is a LB. Sometimes people write LBF for pound force because um, they might use also pound mass for mass. They don't use that in our text, so I'm going to just use a LB. And uh, what is it for mass? A slug, yes. And uh, so the way to make the connections between uh, all of these, uh, you use G. So G, of course, is equal to 9.8, uh, so meter per second square in uh, SI units. What is it equal to? 32.2 meter per second square. Exactly. So if you have something in, uh, if you have a weight in pounds, and you want to see how many slugs are in there, you divide by G. So you see, you say M in slugs, it's equal to W in pounds divided by 32.2. Now there is another unit of uh, mass, which is a pound mass. And then uh, means that one uh, mass, well, a mass of one pound mass has a weight of one pound force. <coughs> so different uh, units. So, Meaning that one pound mass is equal to 32.2 slugs. That's horrible. No, actually, one over 32.2. You see, I get confused. So forget about the pound mass, but uh, it's one over. It's not easier. It's not the same. So are we going to have to use slugs in this class? Uh, rarely, but it might happen. Are we going to have to use Anglo-Saxon units in this class? Uh, well, sometimes, as you can see, we're going to do problem two here on the safe a 10 pound block. So. But it's not going to be... Uh, too, too tricky. It's not like in the thermodynamics where sometimes you have units all over the place, uh, like yeah, BTU no. or something. Thermal really ruining with units thrown. Well, you can lobby for a change. So let's do uh, number two on page uh, 113. Lobby, you know, in Congress oh. to change. Uh, I thought you said load. Oh, no, no, no. Lobby. problem to just uh, get used to the notion of force. So you're going to have to uh, uh, use some of the kinematics uh, formulas that uh, we have seen. So it has an initial velocity of uh, 10 feet per second. It is, uh, so there is no friction.